It feels nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous. The weight limit is right at the edge of my weight, but they said it'll be fine. Fingers crossed. This one says design finalization underway. Does that mean it's they're still kind of working out some of the design for it or? Okay, here we go. Oh my God. Oh God. All right. Oh, here we go again. New technology can often feel like a free dive into the unknown. Yeah, nice bungee. Here at AWE in Long Beach, an AR-focused convention, we're in wild, weird times with things like AI taking over a lot of the mind share and the capabilities in this space and the form starting to change. Everything is kind of up for grabs. We have things like Meta Ray-Bans, we have things like X-Reels glasses, Snap is working on AR glasses that are coming out next year. We also have Google's Android XR, which is a whole VR and AR platform that they're building that taps into Gemini that's gonna start with AI glasses that are gonna be available via Warby Parker and others, and then it's gonna get into full AR glasses. So what to expect? One, keep an eye out for the peripherals. Qualcomm is showing off how rings can work with glasses. There's also DoublePoint, a company that connected watches to different AR glasses. This year they're working with Snap with their spectacles to show how a watch can interconnect and do things not just for hand gestures and tracking, which Snap can already do, but for doing stuff when your hand is down and out of sight. It also works while walking, so I can do this. Or... And speaking of going around and doing things, AR glasses are going to aim to be something that you actually wear around in the world. Snap has been pretty active in a lot of those explorations because their glasses can be worn outdoors and they also work with multiple people at once. So I'm looking at a, a location-based AR experience by Niantic Spatial that's using Snap Spectacles. I'm walking around here and Dot, this little Peridot, this little cute little uh, adorable alien pet that's also a, a standalone game is being an AI guide for me, showing me some of the locations around here. What can you show me right now? You don't have to talk in the cute voice to Dot, but it will happen because I just. Can you tell me what animal that is? Oh, that's the Humboldt squid mosaic. Snap is working on a smaller size spectacles next year that we have not seen yet. There's a lot of this technology in play, but we're not seeing outdoor location-based demos like this yet, so this is intriguing. And it requires a hotspot that you gotta keep tethered to or have enough data out there connected to keep you uh, functioning, which we're doing right now via phone. Now, unfortunately, my prescription is not good enough to fit into Snap Spectacles, and I did not bring contact lenses. So I looked at it with pretty fuzzy vision, but I've seen Snap Spectacles before. I know what they're visually going for. I got enough to see how the interactions work. There are companies that are already working on these overlaps in entertainment. Meow Wolf is announced that it's working with Niantic Spatial to extend its things in augmented reality at its physical installs. I haven't seen any of that yet because those demos and experiences aren't gonna come until 2026. But I feel like what I got to see was a little taste of that. What about that over there? You're gonna be the person just talking to themselves, looking at art like this in the middle of a street in Long Beach. Then we're also seeing how physical and virtual overlap in other things like cars. One company called Distance showed me a glasses-free light field display that's meant to be used in really mission critical situations like defense and also driving. What I got to see was this large mixed reality display that kind of looked similar to other light field displays, but the big difference here is the distance. This can show a lot more depth than I was used to, and because it's semi-transparent, it could be used in a windshield to be able to show you some of those overlays and be fast enough to use while driving. And the company is already working on having this technology installed into cars. They're looking at medical and other applications. What about theme parks? I mean, I just tried Mario Kart in Epic Universe using a visor. What if you put that stuff in a windshield? Let's make it happen. Now getting back down to earth, when are we actually gonna see some of these things in glasses that we'll actually use? I mean, Android XR, that's still a work in progress. We're expecting new meta glasses to come at the end of this year, and Google's AI glasses are gonna come the year after, 2026. 
but there are already companies that are kind of pushing the boundaries. I'm using tech that uh, Xreal has right now. Xreal, One Pro glasses, and an eye camera that's sold separately that you plug right in. Now, that already uses photos and videos. It can capture photos and videos. Eventually, it's gonna work with AI, but it also does six degrees of freedom, so you could pin a display in space now and walk towards it and walk away from it like you would do in augmented reality. So I've got a pinned phone image here of, of, of myself, actually, that I'm walking up to and walking past and around, and it's hanging there. These are not full AR glasses yet, but they are pushing towards some of that territory with this type of tracking. And also keep in mind, Xreal is gonna be working on a developer version of this Project Aura glasses headset, which is gonna be derived from this technology and is going to be running augmented reality using Google Play and using Android XR. So it's kind of like a taste of what's to come that can plug into your phone. And the future's also getting weird. I mean, I tried Hapticos' gloves, which are also trying to get a little more tactility into things with hand gestures. So for the moment, the haptic gloves are using uh, Quest controllers to, to help spatial tracking, which adds some weight to them. Eventually the goal is to not have those, but here I am in my, in my total hand rig, ready to go in. The heart is vibrating. It's beating. Oh, I, I can also feel some like resistance when I grab it through the fingers. And then of course, there's just the weird fun stuff. Uh, Free Aim, which makes VR walking shoes that we tried last year briefly, I finally got to walk for a little bit in them. Like roller skates. I've never used roller skates. So I'm doing, I'm sure I'll be great. They're motorized, they have wheels on the bottom, these motors, and they, they activate and deactivate depending on what your activity is. Sometimes they can move backward when you're walking. Other times they activate only when you're stepping down. We saw Free Aim last year at AWE, but this year they're actually going to be coming out. There's a Kickstarter campaign that's going to be ending in July, and they should be shipping about six to eight months after that, according to Free Aim. Would I walk in Free Aim shoes all the time? No, but I think it's interesting. And it just shows other stuff out there. With AI being unclear and how it fits into glasses, whether we're all going to be wearing glasses or VR headsets or maybe nothing at all, AWE is kicking the tires on a whole bunch of things. I think next year, it's going to become increasingly clear as more glasses start to come out and more little things like watches that start to work with them. It's been a good day here in the park. The future is as unclear as it's ever been. Sometimes you just gotta jump in head first and say, three, two, one, Bungie! Bungie!